In this video, we look at the normal approximation to the negative binomial. Here we're going to let y be a negative binomial with parameters r and p. p is the probability of an event, and r is the number of events that we want to see before we stop sampling. Now, if we let xi be a negative binomial with 1p, a geometric distribution, uh, for i equals 1 to r, then y can be represented as this sum, the sum of these xi's, and where y is again negative binomial rp. And we illustrated this in this video that I call distribution for sum of negative binomial random variables using the moment generating function. Now in this video, we're going to assume that r is large, and also we're going to use the central limit theorem. Now this first step here, so it's the sum of the xi, you know, or the mean, you know, divided by r, minus its expected value, times the square root of r. As r goes to infinity, it limits in distribution to a normal random variable, 0, and then variance of xi. This is an exact result, but here we're going to assume that for some large r, and what does r large mean? I, I'm not for sure, but the larger r gets, the closer it is to a normal distribution. So from this step forward, we can't say that it's an exact result or that it that it limits to it, because once we get rid of the the you know the r's over here, which goes to infinity then it doesn't become an asymptotic result anymore. So once we divide both sides by r, and then it goes in squared, this is approximately a normal distribution. You know, and here, so then we add the mean over, and then it becomes, it's approximately normal with mean this and variance this. Now let's multiply both sides by r, so we just get the expected value, or not, the sum of these xi, which we're calling y. Then it goes in as r times the mean, and it goes r squared, but that r cancels with one of those, and we're left with r. Now we know the mean and the variance of a, a negative binomial with r equal 1. It's 1 minus p over p, and then this is 1 minus p over p squared, and that's it. So y is approximately normally distributed with this mean and this variance. Now let's look at a simple contrived example. Let's assume we have 52 cards in a deck. There's 12 face cards, the jack, queen, and king of each suit. We're going to sample with replacement, and we want to find the probability that the 25th face card is drawn before the 80th draw. And let's calculate that. So since this is a negative binomial situation, we're going to keep drawing a card with replacement until we find the 25th face card, and then we stop. So this is a classic negative binomial. But let's use this normal distribution to approximate the probability. So R is 25, P is 12 over 52. The mean, when you plug these in, is 83.3. The variance, you know, when you plug in the numbers, is 361.1. So now we want to find the probability that x is less than 80, right? Drawn before the 80th draw. So that means x is less than or equal to 79, but with the continuity correction, we add a 0.5. Now if we subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviations of both sides, this becomes approximately a standard normal distribution. And that probability is, is 42%. So there's 42% chance that we find the 25th face card before the 80th throw. Now, if we were to do this exactly, then the probability that x is less than 80 is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to 79, which is 44.6. And that's the exact. So we're pretty close when r is only 25. Now, the beauty of this normal approximation, when r becomes quite large, then that coefficient in front of the negative binomial, that combinations, 
is really not even doable. You know, what's 100 factorial? Most calculators don't even calculate that. And so the normal approximation becomes the realistic way to approximate that probability. And for R as low as 25, the probabilities aren't that far off. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.